A victory tonight for people in British Columbia who are living with disabilities. The province is increasing funding for Community Living BC. But critics say the nearly $9 million announced today is just a drop in the bucket. That funding comes after we've been looking into cutbacks and their impact. No orthotics for patients unless their feet might be amputated. Not enough protein drinks for a man dying of cancer and others. CTV's legislature reporter Stephen Andrew has the story. He joins us now. Stephen. Hudson Community Living BC says the nearly $9 million increase in its budget will go to help 540 people and reduce wait lists. But when pushed by reporters today, the organization couldn't explain how it came up with those numbers. For the government agency charged with looking after BC's disabled, the $8.9 million increase in its budget is a celebration. This speaks to government's responsiveness and continued commitment to the needs of adults with developmental disabilities and their families. But advocates say the money is nowhere near the $70 million needed to fix the challenges facing community living BC. It's frankly like throwing a cup of tea to put out a kitchen fire. The funding increase comes after several CTV News reports into complaints government cuts or inaction were causing disabled clients pain and suffering. Terminal cancer patient John Michael Barner told CTV the government refused to give him enough money to pay for nutritional supplements. If something's not done immediately, that the doctors told me that I'd be dead in three months. Within a day of our investigation, the government suddenly found money. Come your foot, come your foot, hi. And there's Melissa Matthews, a severely disabled woman <laughs> who needs shoe inserts so she can walk. The government refused to supply orthotics unless her feet were at risk of being amputated. Since our story aired, the ministry found that money too. Melissa's mother and other parents who know the system well say the nearly $9 million in additional funds will do little. I'm hoping it's a monthly increase. I think parents are not afraid of the government anymore. They're not afraid to speak out. Um, they, need, they need to listen to us. Community Living BC says the money will help 540 existing and new clients and will cut wait times. But when asked how long that wait list is and how it came up with those figures... Well, I can't give you those numbers today. I don't have them with me. Oh, so later this afternoon? Yeah, it'll take a little longer than that. But you can't tell us what your wait lists are. <laughs> we'll get the wait list information to you. The organization says it has to be responsible during times of fiscal restraint. The NDP believes government priorities are wrong. The wasted dollars the government had put in the HST campaign, the advertising campaign as one ex example. The government says it's a step in the right direction and shows it's listening. But in today's financial times, to be realistic with the global economic conditions, the return to the PST, we, we as a government have always supported Community Living BC. The parents say the government's bungling of the HST is no excuse to not help people in need. Now, the government has been under a lot of pressure since we and other media outlets began highlighting these issues uh, on the Social Development Ministry. The NDP a little suspicious, Hudson, today. At the timing of today's announcement, Minister Harry Bloy knows that he's going to get a grilling in question period when the House sits in October. I expect the only answer, though, that the opposition will get now is we've just added $9 million to the budget. So expect this to continue uh, through the next session. All right. Stephen Andrew, thank you. You're welcome.